Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Reza Rad from Radacad and in this video I'm going to talk about slowly changing dimension or SCD. Uh, I'm going to do two separate videos at least and this is going to be about the concepts of SCD, a slowly changing dimension, what it is, what it means, what are different types of it and then in the next video or the videos after that I'll talk about how to implement it using technologies such as Fabric and Power BI. So let's go into this video and learn about SCD and what it is, what are different types of it. Uh, so a slowly changing dimension or SCD basically is, uh, is coming from the fact that the dimension attributes change over the time. Uh, when, you have a, uh, when you have a value in a column, which we call it also attribute in a uh, dimension, uh, and that value changed. Like for example, your customer uh, city was in New York City, now the customer moved to London, or the customer's name changed. Depending on what uh, action you take when that change happens, uh, different types of SCD happen. So SCD basically stands for a slowly changing dimension, a value of a dimension member. Member basically means a row in dimension. Uh, in an attribute, basically attribute means a column in a dimension, uh, changes over the time and then uh, you take different actions. Sometimes, for example, you may say, well, I don't really accept the change, such as customer number. I expect this to be always unique, always the same thing. If there's a change, there's a problem in the source system. Sometimes you might say, well, I accept the change, I just update the value, uh, such as the customer name. Sometimes you might say, well, I accept the change, I want the new value but I also want to, his to preserve the historical value so that in case uh, I need to get back to it I can uh, get back to that. So because there are different types of ways that you can handle this change there are different types of SCD. Uh, these are um, some of the most um, common types of SCD available. Type 0 means retain the original, don't accept the change. Type 1 accept the change but just update it you don't keep any historical information. Type 2, which is one of the most common types, is preserve the full history using an update and insert. Uh, type 3, preserve a history but only a limited history, like only the previous value or two values before. Uh, type 4, basically preserve the history but it's in a more cleaner uh, data model way. Um, type 5, 6 and 7 are more like combined versions which are rarely used. Um, they are combined version of other types that we had before. Uh, so let's go into that and I'll talk about the most common ones, not every one of these types. Uh, the first type, uh, slowly changing dimension type 0 means that you don't accept the change. Sometimes in some scenarios there is a column, there is a field that the value of that is not expected to change, like customer number, or customer ID, uh, and you build everything based on that. If that is expected to change, it is all right, but sometimes in most of the cases that is not expected to change. If there is a change, that probably means that there is a bad quality data in the source system, or there is a problem in the source system that has to be investigated. So basically you don't accept the change. This is the most simple type of uh, SCD because you don't really do anything, you just, accept, you just don't accept the change. Um, another type of SCD, which is type SCD type 1, which is one of the most common types, is you update the original value. For example, customer name is one of the examples in a sales system that uh, the customer name previously was something like something else. Alex and then the customer name changed to something like Reza um, and then um, you just update the value. You, you don't care what was the previous name of the customer. It doesn't matter in your sales system. In some systems it might matter but not in this example scenario. So in a scenario like this you basically just update the value or you can delete the record and insert new which is exactly the same thing. Uh, this is uh, one of the most common types because you probably are doing it without even knowing it. Um, most of the ETL processes are deleting the data in the, uh, in the dimension table and loading it again, which basically means update the original value and STD type 1. So it's a simple implementation again. 
Um, so in this case, if I have a table like this, customer ID and customer name, uh, and then the name changes, the updated value would be same customer ID, but in a different name. This is a CD type one. A CD type two, which is, um, which is also common, but a little bit more complicated to implement, is that you want to keep the history, the entire history, like the customer was in New York City, for a while in a sales system, in a retail sales scenario. So all of the purchases in New York City should be related to New York City. But then the customer last month moved to London and you don't want those purchases for New York City to be counted as London because if you update the customer's city as London, everything updates to London. Uh, in a case like this, will preserve the history. So what we'll do in our um, design, we will create um, two columns, from date and to date, or you might call it start date, end date, effective start date, effective end date, doesn't really matter. Uh, these two columns are defining what would be the period in which that uh, value is valid. And when the new value comes in, you set the to date of the current record, which is now the old record, and then you'll add a new record with the from date, but the to date is null or blank. Um, it is also a design that in which, in this design, you will need a surrogate key. Without surrogate key, this wouldn't work because just relying on the previous customer ID, um, which is exactly the same, it wouldn't work. So I'll show you how this works. If I have a table like this, that customer uh, ID is 1003, customer name Reza, based in New York City, um, you see I have from date and to date is null. So from date is wherever this record has been initiated first and then there's no to date. So this is a current record. Then the source system, city of the customer changed from uh, whatever it was to Oakland. Uh, but it's still same customer ID. So we cannot really use that customer ID in our fact table. We call this natural key or business key. This is the primary key of the source system, but we cannot use it in our fact table because if we use that, then the update of the value wouldn't really um, keep the historical changes. So what we'll do, we'll create a customer key, which we call it surrogate key in the table. This surrogate key, as you see, uh, would have two different values in the table when the change happens. The first record surrogate key customer key basically is three uh, for New York City from 1st of March 2024 to 14th of July 2024. But, the, but then when the change happens, when the ETL detect the new changes, uh, another record with the same customer ID but different customer key, surrogate key, uh, is added with the new city in it. The from date is 15th of July 2024, which was the date that this happened, and no to date, right? So this is the most current date, uh, current record, that is the previous record. And in your fact table, you would use customer key rather than customer ID. This is how we preserve the history. Uh, I'm going to um, do a full video on how to do this in another, um, in another uh, video separately because this is going to be a long video if I explain everything in here. So this is a CD type two, which comes with a little bit complicated process, not too complicated, but it is uh, complicated, more complicated than a CD type one. Uh, type three is saying that you'll keep uh, a history, but only a limited history. Um, for example, you just care what was the previous job title of the customer and the current job title. You don't care about all other job titles before. Uh, so what we'll do in situations like this, we'll create a column for previous value and we'll also create a column for that saying that previous, um, um, like the effective date for the previous value. So for every column in your table that you want to keep uh, Pres uh, preserve the limited history or STD type three, you'll have to add these two columns. If you want to preserve more than one history, you can add two columns here. For example, the previous value, the value before that, right? Uh, so it'll, it keeps adding more columns into that. The process for that would be something like this. So if I have a customer value like this with the job title consultant, and then the customer's job title changes, will have a job title updating, but the previous job title would be the value that it was before with the effective date in which when this is more effective. Because this is a limited history, usually uh, most of the implementation will use type two to keep the entire history because this is itself also uh, can be complicated if you want to do it for multiple fields, if you want to do it for, um, 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 let's say, more than one history. So it sometimes can be 
even more complicated to implement. Then we have a CD type 4, which is one of my favorite types basically. This is type 2 with a cleaner implementation. To type 2, one of the problems with type 2 is that you'll have everything in one dimension table. Your current records, your historical records, the current records, their to date is null, but their historical records is also there. So you have a dimension table with a lot of records that you may not always need all of them. Uh, what type 4 is talking about is that you can separate these in two tables. You can have a history table to only have the historical changes, everything. And then you have a um, clean dimension table that only has, has the most up-to-date values in it. So in case that a change happens, the normal dimension table would have an update. But the historical, record, historical table would have an update and an insert. So the ETL process for this is, is even more complicated than type 2. And this is one of the reasons that this is also not so popular option. So if I have a situation like this, my customer table, uh, my customer table dimension customer wouldn't even need from and to date. It is just the most recent value. My history table would need the effective date. You can keep from and to date, but you don't really need to based on the previous records value. You can basically get to that. So only one effective date column is enough, but it's up to you if you want to have from and to. Um, and then when the change happens, you see that the customer table, <coughs> sorry, you see the customer dimension gets updated with the most up-to-date value, but the history um, would get updated and also inserted um, at the same time. Basically inserted because if we are using just effective date, if you use from and to date, then it might get updated as well. Then there are three uh, not so popular uh, SCD types, type 5 which combines type 1 and type 4, type 6 which combines type 1, 2, 3, basically plus of these would become 6, type 7 which would make it a little bit easier for connecting the fact table to the dimension table, it uses both surrogate key and natural key in the fact table. Uh, these types are for very specific scenarios and, um, and because of that very rarely used. The most common types are, uh, which are used is type 1. You may already be doing it without even knowing it. It's really easy to apply type 2 because it preserved entire history. Uh, it, is, uh, it is easier than other types of uh, slowly changing dimension that preserve the history, but still it is a bit of process itself. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about that process and how this works. I hope you enjoyed this video and liked this video um, and learned what slowly changing dimension ty uh, types are. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to do a CD type 2 uh, as a starting point using Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. How does it work? The scripts part of it and all of those kind of things. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.